Hey, what's up guys? So in today's video, uh, I'm going to be tackling essentially two workflow issues, uh, or I guess really tips and tricks uh, at the same time. So this, this video is going to touch on number one, um, fixing skew inside of Substance Painter. This is something that like Marmoset Toolbag, for instance, has built in that you can just do really quickly with uh, with, with their built-in tools, but with Substance Painter, it's a little more involved if you wanted to fix any kind of skew you get with your normal maps um, or really any of your other maps. Um, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a moment, but it's going to deal with that primarily. Um, well, not primarily, but first, I guess, we're going to talk about that. And then we're also going to talk about how to create a custom output template so that when you're exporting textures, um, you can export them exactly how you want with the types of names that you want for the textures um, and in this case what I'm going to be doing is baking out one pass of my mesh maps using uh, what's called average normals and one pass with that turned off and then combining that and then exporting those maps so that I can bring them back into Substance Painter and combine them and mask them off so just to get started so you can know you can see what I'm talking about uh, we've got this guy here uh, just quick little model um, to show the effect of this basically uh, so I've got these little indent um, things here you can see and then for my low poly it's just a flat surface right it's a very simple flat surface I've got the mirrors UV that's why I have that that edge there in the center so whatever bakes here is gonna bake here vice versa so if I bring that, bring that into substance painter let me go back to this uh, view actually you know what I'm going to get rid of all these so you can see it as a fresh bake here if I go ahead and go into the baker and I've turned off all my baking visualization but this is what it would look like um, by default I think inside of uh, substance painter once I bring this in to start baking um, but I've turned that off so that I can visualize the maps as I go and uh, okay I'll go ahead and hide that up or hide that there and I'm gonna start with just the normal map so we can see what I'm talking about here so right now I have average normals turned on and that's gonna basically it's gonna bake based off of the average normals of the cage um, so for instance the normals here when it's when it's searching when the rays are searching they're gonna come out perpendicular here but as they get closer to the edge to this corner here that those normals are gonna be basically diagonal pointing away from the uh, from the vertex and then so on and so forth back to where it's in the center it's perpendicular but then as we get over here it's going to be diagonal in this direction uh, it's kind of hard to visualize that um, so I hope the mouse did it justice but you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second once I go ahead and bake if I bake the selected textures uh, right now we just have the normals you'll see that my corners here they look pretty good. They look they look just like the high poly. They're very smooth. Those transitions are nice. I don't see any seams. But if you look at the actual indented uh, little design here, you'll see that the the sides here they start to get kind of pinched up on the sides, and that's caused by the average normals kind of skewing those uh, <clears throat> those normals. And so if I was to turn off average normals now, the baker actually let's turn on the baking visualization visualization so you can see that this actually will show it pretty well okay so if I zoom in close here and I turn that average normals back on you'll see that the cage is now connected and if I pull this max frontal distance further and further away you'll see it starts to get a little more like round here and that's basically because those average normals uh, are being represented by that roundness. I don't know if that makes sense. That probably sounds a little weird, but it's it's just it's a good way to visualize what exactly is happening here. There's there the the normals are being averaged. That's the easiest way to say it. And if I turn that off, now each one of these faces is now disconnected wherever there's a hard edge there. So if I bring this max frontal distance out everything's coming out exactly perpendicular to its corresponding face and there's no scale happening like scaling or warping happening 
to compensate for that. So let me bring this back down to about where it was. So now that I have this average normals turned off, if I go ahead and bake that, we can see that now this is a perfect representation here in the center of those normals. But if I come to the corner, now we're going to have this ugly seam. And so what our goal is going to be is to try to blend these two things together where I have the not average normals map in the center here, but then it's averaged as I get out to the side here. So what we're going to have to do is bake two separate passes and combine them here in Substance Painter. So to go ahead and get started, I'm going to go ahead and bake out one pass of average normals. We're going to do with the normal map. We're going to do the ambient occlusion, curvature, and thickness. Uh, I never use the bottom three here, um, only in some cases. Um, you know, it depends on your project if you're going to need to use them. But the default ones are from normals down to thickness. Now, the world space normals and the position, they're not going to matter whichever one you choose between average normals or not. And I'll show you a quick little, little visualiza ugh, excuse me, visualization of that. If I go down to my normal uh, world space normals mesh map view, and I go ahead and bake out the world space normals. You'll see that it looks like this. If I uncheck average normals and bake it again, it's identical. So this one doesn't get affected, so we're going to ignore it. Same thing with position. Go down here, visualize, visualize position. Sorry, I, I went to the dentist today. And my mouth is still not fully uh, fixed from being numb. So uh, excuse that if I, if I stutter or slur. Uh, so yeah, if I, if I go ahead and bake out the position map with average off and then do it with average on, it's identical. So position and world space normals you can ignore. ID, uh, I generally will do average normals off, but again, it's going to depend uh, on how you set up your, your IDs to begin with. So we're going to ignore IDs for today. So what I do know is that we're going to need normal ambient occlusion, curvature, and thickness, because these ones are going to change depending on whether we have average normals checked on or off. But I want to go back here and get rid of these guys first. So we're starting with a fresh blank slate. I'm going to go back into material view. You can do that with the drop down, or I'll just hit the M key. All right, go ahead and bake these maps out. And this is with average normals turned on. So again, they look perfect from these corners but not so great when you're looking straight on. So from here, I'm going to go back out into the painter um, viewport. I'm going to go into my library. I'm going to go from materials. I'm just going to do show all. I could just do uh, textures, but show all is going to be fine because right now I'm going to switch from all libraries to project. And the only thing in the project, well, actually, let me go ahead and remove any of the unused ones so that we only have the four that I just baked. But anything in the project is going to show up here. And since I only have the uh, baked maps I just made, I don't need to worry about um, narrowing down my search to textures. I have everything I need here. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on these and I'm going to export them. Right now it's exporting to this folder that I created for this demo. Just hit select folder, move on to the next one, export resource, select folder, export reset, resource, select folder, and then one more time select folder. So if I open up that folder here, that's the wrong one. Uh, this guy here. You'll see that I have all four of those maps in here exactly as I want them. Um, you can use these as they are. I actually like to rename them and I have this advanced renamer here which is a really great um, program for this. I forgot to change the material name. That's fine. Uh, we'll leave this alone. So I'll get these names instead of these names. They're just shorter, easier to read. Uh, and actually, I'm going to add, let's see if this is the right thing. So I'm going to add underscore AVG so that I know that these are the average ones. Start the batch. If you'd like a link, or actually, you know what? I'll just leave a link in the description for this advanced renamer. It's a really, really great program. Um, I think it's technically free, but you can pay for like a, a pro license if you want to get extra features or whatever. But the free stuff I think works fine for me. Okay, 
So these are all renamed to their uh, underscore average and they're simplified and then I'm going to go back in here to the baker I'm going to uncheck average normals and I'm going to bake these out again go back into the painter work or uh, workspace and I'll go ahead and do this again export resource Okay, so now these are all exported. I'll go ahead and go back into that folder and these new ones I'm going to bring into my renamer and I'll do the same thing. I'm going to change underscore abg to underscore strt for straight. I know what that means but you can use whatever naming convention you want. This is just for to help me uh, keep things nice and organized for myself. Okay, so now back in this folder, I have the average and straight for each of these. I'm going to go ahead and grab them. And first thing I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and get rid of these out of my mesh maps. And I'll just remove any of the unused resources from my project. So now those are gone. And we're working once again with a fresh slate. So if I have all these guys selected, I'm just going to drag them into my uh, library and... It's not working for some reason. Let me get rid of my search. Let's try this again. Cool. I'll just click and drag on all of them and change this to texture. And then I'll import them just to the project. I don't need to import them to the library. And I tend to stay away from current section session altogether. It can cause problems if you're using assets in your library in current session and then you close out the program and reopen it. Um, some things won't load or save properly. So, all right, go ahead and import. All right, and now we just have to set up our layers so that we're going to be importing or inputting these into the layers with into their correct channels. But first, before we do that, I have to actually make sure that I have those channels available in my um, in my layers here. These are the these are the channels that I have available to me currently. And I'm actually not going to need them except for the uh, normal. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of emissive, opacity, metallic, roughness, height, and base color. And you can add those back in later on if you want to. If you need to for the same project, I'm assuming you will. But this is just for fixing out, uh, fixing those bake issues. So we just have our normal. I'm going to go ahead and add a user channel. I'm going to go to user zero. And actually, I'm, first I'm going to add the ambient occlusion because we already have that as an option. I'm going to change this L8 to L16. I want 16-bit everything for my mesh maps. I want the best quality mesh maps that I can get. No compromises there. So this is going to be 16 linear. I'm going to go ahead and add another user channel. And this one I'm going to go ahead and name Curvature. Or I'll just name it Curve, make it a little bit easier. Uh, I'm going to change L32F. I don't need a 32-bit image, and I don't need it floating, so I'm going to go to L16. Most of these are going to be L16. Um, actually, all of them are, except for the normals, which is already RGB 16. L just means linear, and in this case, it's it's just uh, linear data, and it's exported out as a grayscale map. So we've got our curvature, and that was... Um, another thing that you got to keep in mind is what number of each user this was. So in this case, it, if you hover over it, it says user zero. So kind of try to remember that for when we get in and make our uh, output template custom later on. Next, we're going to do user channel one. Double click here, and I'm going to rename this into uh, thickness. And these are our four maps that we're going to need uh, to export once we have them all combined properly. Uh, oh, forgot one thing, changing this from L32F to L16. Again, I don't need a 32-bit image. It's a little overkill. Uh, but I do want to make sure that these are all 16-bit. Okay. Um, ambient occlusion mixing. In this specific instance, you want to make sure you set to replace. Um, well, okay. Actually, it doesn't really matter because I'm not going to have an ambient occlusion map in my mesh maps just yet. Uh, this is if I had one in here that later on in the project I was going to be referencing with certain generators uh, 
masks and things, um, then you would want to have it set to replace. But in this case, we can just leave it alone. So kind of disregard what I said there. That's for a different video. Okay, so I'm going to start out with making a fill layer. And before I start adding in my channels here, I'm going to go ahead and change normal blend mode from normal detail to just normal. And I'm going to do the same thing with ambient occlusion because those two by default are set to something other than normal. Curvature and thickness, since those are custom user channels, I don't need to change them. They're automatically going to be set to normal. But that's very, very important for this step. Make sure all your blend modes for all your channels are set to normal. From here, I'm going to go ahead and just name this AVG. I know this is my average layer, and I'm going to go ahead and start just populating these channel boxes here. So I know that the top one's going to be the average because alphabetical order A. And I'll go ahead and just pop this AO into my AO. I'll pop the curvature into my curvature, pop the normals in here, and then I'll pop the thickness in here. So this is what I have here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this layer so I don't have to go back in and start messing with these uh, these blending modes again. It's just going to copy that information over. I'll rename it STRT or whatever you want to. And I'm going to populate this one with the straight versions. So I'll go ahead and drag this in, drag this in, drag this one, and drag this one. So now we have the layers set up and all I have to do is mask out what I want to keep or mask in what I want to keep, I guess I should say. So we'll go ahead and add a black mask to our straight layer and then I'm going to grab a add paint effect. And I already have my soft brush here selected. I got to make sure that it's um, set to white. Is it? Okay, here we go. Ignore that. So I've got it set to white because I want to reveal the average normals. What is going on? Why is it? Oh, okay. I know what's happening. So right now I have these UVs split up into two separate tiles because they're being mirrored. And when I baked, I wanted to make sure that it only baked to one side. So I can only paint on the side that's actually represented in the origin UV tile, which is a zero, zero. So just a side tangent there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and paint in here just to get those not average normals for this section right here. And this right here would be basically the equivalent of skew correction painting in uh, Marmoset. But again, it's a lot more involved of a process to fix that. Okay, so these are looking perfect. It's exactly how I want it to look. Uh, and at this point, I just have to go ahead and export everything. But at this point, this is where I'm going to actually have to make my own custom export setting that will handle and support all of these um, channels. Sorry, I drew a blank there for a second. All right, so I'm going to go to File, Export Textures. I'm going to make sure I change this to 16 bits, even though if I go into my output templates, um, it should base it off of what the individual one is set to, individual channel. So first things first, we'll go to output templates. And I think I'm going to start off with, um, I guess we can just use the standard PBR metallic roughness. That's fine. Because we're going to making, be making a custom one uh, based off of it. And the reason I'm not starting with a fresh one is because I want to try to copy some of this naming convention information here into the new one. Or actually, you know what? I can do that without making a duplicate. So I'll just, I'll copy all this. So I'm going to select it all, control C, copy that over. And we're going to create a new export preset. And I'll call this bake fix four maps, because this one I know I'm only fixing four maps on. You can name it whatever you want, but that's what I'm going to be doing. OK, so first off, we need an export. We need an output for the normal map channel. So we know normal map is going to be RGB. I'll go ahead and click on this RGB thing right here. In the name, I'm just going to paste in that uh, the one that I copied over. I'm going to change base color here to normal. And then I'm also going to get rid of this dollar sign mesh underscore. I don't want the mesh name in front. I just want the texture set name. 
I feel like it's a more efficient naming convention. Sometimes your mesh names are a lot longer and you'll have this huge file name for a simple like texture file. So we'll leave that at texture set normal. And then we have to go in here and drag in our normal map. So in this case, in this uh, way, you're you're going to want to make sure that you're working in the same normal map um, type as your project. In this case, this project is set to Direct X, so I'm going to go ahead and export this as normal Direct X. You literally just click and drag it onto the RGB channel there, and make sure you check RGB channel. I'm also going to change 8 bits to 16, and PNG is just fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a gray channel. The rest of them are going to be gray because they're all linear ambient occlusion curve, uh, curve and thickness, uh, thickness. So I'll do that again. Uh, actually, I'm just going to copy this one instead. And I'm going to change normal to ambient occlusion. Actually, no, I'm going to just type AO, make it simple. And then I'm going to grab my mixed AO. So there's a difference here actually between ambient occlusion and mixed AO. Ambient occlusion would grab the channel or the uh, the texture that you have plugged into your mesh maps under your uh, texture settings, which is down here. Unfortunately, I can't scroll with this open. But that's what this one is referring to. These are your mesh maps specifically from your mesh maps space where you baked for, uh, to. These, however, are maps that are converted based on what you've got in your layer stack. Now our layer stack has the ambient occlusion from uh, these two being mixed. So that's what we want. We want mixed AO and I'm going to go ahead and drop it into the gray channel. None of these I'm going to be using the alpha channel. This one I'm also going to change to 16 bits. And then we'll do that again for the other two. This one's going to be a little bit harder to uh, do because we have to remember which order we did these in. But luckily I still have this part open right here, which will make things easier for me. So I'll go ahead and paste in the thing from before. I'm going to name this one Curve. And, oops. And I know that Curvature was my user zero um, custom channel. So I'm going to go ahead and drag user zero into the gray here check gray and I'm going to change this to 16 bits and then we'll do that one more time for our thickness same thing paste in that description from before thickness and then we have to find our thickness which is our user channel 1 here and drop it on our gray channel and now we have our oops let me change this this will be our perfectly set up export template uh, or output template that we're going to use in the export settings. So if I go over here and I'll scroll down to bake, mix, uh, bake fix for maps, make sure I have this all set up 16 bits, PNG uh, size based on texture set size. I think these are all uh, 1K maps. So uh, in that case, I'm actually going to change this because I only baked to 1K, but right now I have the project set to 2048. So I'll just put this to uh, 1024. Uh, padding, I tend to always go with dilation infinite unless I need an alpha. And in here, I'm actually going to create a new folder and we'll call this combined mesh map. And we'll go ahead and export into this folder. So they, whoops, I forgot to change, or I missed a spot here. It says AOL instead of AO. So I'll just open up the output directory and I'm going to fix that real quick. So now I have these mesh maps. At this point, um, what I would normally do is I would group these guys together, call this uh, fix or whatever you want to call it, big fix, and then just hide it. But I also don't want to crowd my library. So I know for sure that these... Um, these this export worked so I'm gonna go ahead and just delete all of these by going up to file well actually I'd have to delete this folder first and then file remove unused assets and boom now we are once again at a fresh start uh, show all 
and project. Yeah, I've got nothing in my project folder. So at this point, I can go ahead and drag in these four maps. Apparently not to an empty shelf space. I guess your shelf that you're trying to drag it into has to actually have something in it, which is weird. So I'll select all these guys, go back and set them as texture for project only, import them. And now we can go ahead and put these into their respective spots inside the mesh maps section here. I'll drag my AO, curvature, normals, and thickness. Cool, so now we have a perfect set of mesh maps for those specific ones. We can go ahead and bake out the other ones that we are missing. And we're good to go. So this is completely, you know, it's finished setting up. Uh, so today we have talked about output templates inside of the uh, texture exporter. And we've also talked about skew, skew correction when you have uh, average normals and not average normals checked on. And just as like a bonus, um, I guess, tutorial thing here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you one more time a custom export template that I'm going to build from scratch here. Um, and to start it off, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these channels here. And I'll add back in my base color, my height, and my roughness, and my metallic. And I'm just going to add a random smart material on here. I don't, I don't care which one. Uh, let's do, let's do this copper red bleached. Why not? Cool. So normally you would go in here, you would go ahead and export your textures and you would select the export setting uh, that you need for what your project, depending on what you're doing. Um, but let's say you're working with a custom shader where let's say for instance, the ambient occlusion would be in the red channel of one map. Uh, the metalness would be in the blue channel, sorry, the green channel, and then your roughness would be in the blue channel. So you can set up an RGB uh, output and pack those into one map here. So output templates, I'll go ahead and create a new one. And let's do R plus G plus B. And that's basically, it's just going to be an RGB map, but then it's going to allow you to input individual maps from here into each channel and it'll pack those together. So in this case, I want my ambient occlusion, uh, whoops, no. Um, yeah, we'll go from mesh maps. So I want ambient occlusion in my red for the gray channel. And then I want to do, what was it? I want roughness in the blue channel. And then I want my metallic in the green channel. And we'll leave all this other stuff alone. And then we'll go ahead and paste in that other thing here. We'll go, this is going to be our uh, packed, we'll call it metal, or whatever you want to call it. And then this one we'll call our base color. So here we'll go ahead and drag in our base color. So already we already have pretty much all the maps that we need. Oh, we need one more, sorry, um, for the normals. What am I doing? Paste, there we go. So in here, I'll go ahead and grab a direct X normal RGB. And this is all perfectly set up. I can change this to eight bits plus dithering or 16. Uh, right now I'm just gonna leave it as an eight bit texture. So I'll change the name of this to packed metallic and go over to my settings, change this to packed metallic. And then, um, sure, I'll throw it in the same folder. It doesn't matter. So if I go ahead and open that back up, this is our packed metal, our packed metallic um, map here where it's gonna have all three maps in one. So if you had a custom shader that can handle that, it's going to save you some space where you have three maps packed into one texture, which is really cool. And if I was to pull this into, uh, ignore that, please. <laughs> pull this into Photoshop, 
and inspect each channel. We've got red, there's our ambient occlusion, green, there's our roughness, or sorry, metallic, and then blue, there's our roughness. So just another cool way that you can utilize those custom export output templates. Um, and hopefully to give you like a better understanding of how exactly it works. So you can go through and, uh, you know, figure out how to make your own if you need to at any point. And then if you don't need it, you can always just go in here and right click on it and hit remove as well. So it's, it's pretty limitless what you can do with all these custom export settings. Um, anyway, that just about covers everything I wanted to talk about today. If there's anything that I glossed over too quickly, you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave comments in the, uh, you know, in the comment section down below, or you can message me. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and leave a link to that advanced re renamer in the description of this video as well. So that hopefully you guys can get some good use out of it. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll uh, see you on the next one.